morning. Lovely to join you this morning online. Lovely to be in your space. Thanks for welcoming us in. This week I've been thinking a little bit about um, one of the things that, that it, uh, it seems that, that Christians uh, do something that we're encouraged to do, and that's to tell stories. Uh, we're storytellers. That, that's a human thing. That's not just a Christian thing. We're, we're storytellers. Um, some of us really enjoy telling stories, our experiences, the things that we've gone through, the things we've learned. Um, not everybody likes uh, telling stories, but I know that most of us love hearing stories. And so I'm encouraged to think about what kinds of things have I learned in this life, just as much as I enjoy hearing from those who have walked this journey, walked the faith for uh, some time, a long time. And, uh, and I enjoy hearing the things that the Lord has placed upon their heart. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was directed to the first song we're going to sing today, Trust and Obey. It's almost like the song is encouraging us to find this, that, that one strange, uh, not strange, but, you know, what, what's that one quirk that will help us uh, get what, uh, what we're hoping for, this intimacy with Jesus. And the chorus goes, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And I like that lyric. It says that through trusting and obeying that we unlock this happiness. But we know that's actually quite limiting. We can unlock far more than that. We can unlock joyfulness. We can unlock hope. We can unlock a sense of the presence of Christ. And of course, this is not something that we have done ourselves, but the blessing that comes from the Lord as we do put ourselves in his path, as we get connected to the vine as we trust and obey. And so I encourage you, if you are looking at a hymnal, it's hymnal, uh, hymn number 349, Trust and Obey, we'd like to sing a bit of the story along with you. to 
trust and obey and tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know Thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him. Thank you for singing with us. I uh, was reading a little bit in the book of Acts this past week, uh, doing my devotions in the chapter of Acts, uh, chapter 18. And I was reading about the character name Apollos. And often we talk about the, the great biblical characters, kind of the, the powerhouses of the faith. But we sometimes forget to talk about those people who get maybe just like four verses, but they had lives. And they were dedicated to Christ as much as they could be. And I wanted to read a little bit today about uh, the man, the character Apollos. So this is Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 28. And you're welcome to follow along if you like, or simply just listen. Now, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, con com competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross to uh, Achaia, Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and he wrote to the disciples to welcome him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. So I was very impacted by those words because we just sang the song, Trust and Obey. And we have this man, Apollos, who was fervent and passionate about Jesus, and he trusted the Lord. But he didn't have the full story. And so all he could do was take what he had and be obedient. And that's actually all Jesus is asking us to do. Take what you have and be obedient. Be faithful. And uh, Priscilla and Aquila, they came along and they saw this young man and they thought, he's got power, he's got passion, he loves Jesus. Let's offer him more clearly the scriptures. And so I encourage you today, what God has given you, be faithful with it. Trust and be obedient to him and give back what God has given you. And I promise you, because God is faithful and it's not up to you, he will bring people along if you are teachable and you are willing to learn. He will fill out and grow and make your faith more full so that you'll become more and more knowledgeable and more full of faith. So trust and obey. Love Jesus because he loves you. That's all he asks. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being as you always have been, entirely trustworthy, demonstrating to us simply by showing up as Jesus, a human, and walking on this earth that this place is a safe place to be. We 
ask you, Lord, that we would be mindful of how much you care for us by sending your son, that we would choose to be thoughtful about your presence around us, that we'd be thoughtful about applying ourselves to learning the truth about you. And as we do so, that we give ourselves over to you, responding in love because you did so first. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Sing with us. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. loves me he will stay close beside me all the way he's prepared a home for me and someday his face i'll see yes jesus loves me yes jesus loves me Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. One more time. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And oh. How I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Sing it again.
be seated if you have been standing. 